Welcome to APA's weekly webinar. My name is Billy Zadig, Manager of Special Projects for APA. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. The webinar recording will be posted to APA's webpage later this afternoon. You will receive a follow-up email in the next couple of days with a link to the webpage where all recordings are housed, as well as links to our upcoming webinars. We have webinars planned out through December 2021, and many are open for registration. Professional Continuing Education and AIACLU credits are being offered for today's program. If you are an AIA professional requiring a certificate, please send me an email at Billy, B-I-L-L-I-E, at APA.org, along with your AIA membership number if you have not done so in the past. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Please type your questions in the chat box and they will be answered in the order they are received. If we run out of time and we still have questions, responses will be sent directly to the person asking the question by our presenter. At this time, it's my pleasure to turn this over to Vivica Williams. Vivica, excuse me, take it away. Hi, thanks, Billy. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining my webinar today. Uh, this webinar is to, designed to teach you some best document management practices that will help you save time, space, and money and improve safety in your organization. You'll learn about different document management tools designed for facility documents and how to organize information to keep up with today's technology. So let's get started. Your learning objectives will be to identify dangers that come with poor document management practices, how to improve building operations through implementing a cloud-based document management system, understanding steps involved with a digital transformation, and how to calculate the return on investment. My name is Vivica Williams. I am the president of ArchScan. We are a document management company that specializes in facilities documents and construction documentation. We have been helping facility departments organize and digitize their documents for almost 20 years now. I've been with the business for over 16 years myself. The subject of today's seminar is better document management practices in COVID times, transitioning to a cloud-based document management system. Let's face it, COVID-19 has changed everything we know about the workplace. People are working from home. People are relying on digital documents more and more. Uh, the need to move documents um, into the cloud has become a must in today's workplace. Old filing systems are no longer working. They're painful, they're, they're cumbersome, and they just don't work in the fast-paced society of today. So often, people's plan rooms, even today, still look like this. You get the idea. <laughs> so today's facilities plan room is filled with paper and very few plan rooms have already been digitized. The reason being is that most documents that are older than 15 to 20 years are almost always in a paper format. And you need to keep building documents indefinitely, well, at least for the life of the building. Most plan rooms today are at least 70% paper and 30% digital files. However, many of the digital files are a mess too. They're poorly labeled, they're poorly disorganized, they could be on disks and, and thumb drives and boxes on people's desk drawers. I mean, even today, digital messes are a big problem. So what do you do? 
I mean, you have to figure out how to organize these documents in a better way. If they're, if they're not organized well, you know, you could have some big problems. Um, if you have an, an emergency situation, you might not be able to solve that problem quickly because you can't find the information that you need to solve the problem. You could have information missing when you begin construction or renovation projects, causing very expensive change orders down the road. You could have really poor collaboration between departments because one department has the document and no other department can get to it or know how to find it. That could damage your relationships with your customers as well. Many of you are working in a university setting and you've got students and faculty, staff who are working on your campuses. And if there's a problem, you've got to address it quickly. And then finally, new employees that come on board can't find the answers to their questions because they can't find the document that they need to do their jobs. So all of these are problems with today's document management. So what causes people to change their habits? What are the catalysts that make people decide to adopt new document management practices? There's always something that happens that causes people to change. I have found there's three main reasons why people change the way that they've always done things in the past. One, a disaster strikes. Two, you've got new staff or management or that person that knows everything retires and then the new people don't know, can't figure out what to do. And three, uh, you have to move all that stuff because you're renovating the building or you're moving into a new space and people just don't wanna move all of these boxes of documents. So <laughs> coronavirus is the number one catalyst for change in the document management industry that I've ever seen. Um, it has turned everything upside down. It has caused the world to relook at how business is done. Digital processes are an absolute must in today's society. The ability to sign documents digitally, to be able to share documents, to have access to that information remotely from wherever you are on whatever device you are. Coronavirus has kicked this transition into fast forward and you gotta, you gotta keep up with it. Um, the world isn't gonna go backwards to paper. And so the, the, the need to shift to electronic file management is, is now, you gotta do it now. There's other reasons why uh, paper documents are not a good idea. Uh, we all know what happened in Texas uh, a few weeks ago when they had their super freeze causing buildings all over Texas to have their pipes freeze and burst, causing huge floods in every kind of place, every kind of scenario. And if your paper drawings get damaged, that's it. Often that's the only copy that you have. And, and by having these documents get damaged, that information is lost forever. And the cost to replicate that information is astronomical. Even the most iconic of structures, here's Notre Dame, could have a disaster happen. Never in my lifetime would I have ever imagined that Notre Dame Cathedral could have caught on fire and be practically destroyed. But it happened. None of your buildings on your campuses are outside the realm of disasters. So the documentation that's housed within the document in the buildings and the, the um, ability to respond when a disaster strikes is absolutely critical. So when a disaster strikes, uh, this is what happens. 
you can't respond to a, an emergency quickly. You couldn't find that shutoff valve to shut off the water. You couldn't find the, the right power source to shut off the power. You couldn't find the O&M manual to fix the equipment when it broke down. Um, you're, you're doing some site work and you accidentally hit an underground pipe or wire that you didn't even know existed. All of these things can happen. And if you don't have access to the documents that show how to fix these problems, you're in big trouble as a facility manager. The other time that causes people to like, you know, start sweating is when the documents themselves, your plan room is at risk. Tornadoes, flash floods, fires, burst water pipes, rodents can destroy documents in a plan room. And that information is irreplaceable. You're never going to find out what's underground if the document that shows you where the pipes went gets destroyed, right? So all of these documents are absolutely uh, critical. So often when that disaster strikes and one of these things happen, it causes people to act. And let's face it, coronavirus is the biggest disaster that has ever hit our industry. And uh, it's causing major changes right now. The other change um, that causes document management shifts is when you have a management shift or somebody retires. 50% of all facility management personnel will be retiring within the next eight years. 50%. All of those people have institutional knowledge. They may have been with your institution for decades prior to retirement. They just know where the shutoff valves are. They just know how to fix the problems. But the new people that come in, they're gonna be lost if they can't find the documentation that they need to be able to do their jobs. They can't function with chaotic plan rooms. They don't know how to find the document in, in those messes. And so due to these changes, it's often imperative to finally tackle the document management problem. Like I said in the beginning, another reason for uh, doing these projects is you've got to move the plan room to somewhere else, or you need to use that space for another purpose. You could be downsizing, um, you could be, you know, renovating, who knows? but you gotta move all that stuff. It's a great time to digitize it so that you don't have to set up a new plan room into your new space. So how to choose what system to adopt? Like you've got an, the old way of doing things. What do you do for the future? How do you adopt a new document management system? Well, you could utilize an existing system that you already have in place. It's probably the cheapest option, although it, it might not be um, the best option for you depending on what you're looking for and what your needs are. You could also purchase a new system, uh, whether it be cloud-based or on-premise, that's gonna be up to you. Uh, although I've seen the future and it's in the cloud. There are a lot of document management systems on the market. Uh, AreHub, that's a document management system totally designed for facility documents. Although you might want a more broad reaching system that you can house documents from other departments in as well. Laserfiche is a great option for that. Many of you already have SharePoint because it comes with your, your Microsoft Office suite. So you might be able to use SharePoint you could just want to go um, a really simple and cost-effective route by uh, using like a Dropbox or a share file site. So it really depends on what your budget is as to where you're going to put your documents. But implementing a document management system will help you improve emergency preparedness and building operations. It will help you save time, space, and money. It will help you become more prod productive, help you reduce risks, reduce change orders on major construction projects. It'll help you improve client relations. 
Um, and you really need to choose a system that's user friendly, a system that your staff will not be intimidated to use. So when choosing a document management system, this is what you should expect to find. You would want a system that would be mobile access, where you can get to your information from anywhere, anytime, from any device. You want to have a logical indexing criteria that will allow you to search for your information quickly and easily. You want to be able to collaborate or share information between colleagues and outside vendors. You want a system with improved security. You want a uh, username and passwords, people that have different permission levels. Uh, getting that information secure is really critical. You want to be able to protect your information from disasters. You don't want that one document in the plan room to be your only copy anymore. You want redundancy. You want that protection. You want continuity during staff turnover to be able to continue the knowledge from one person to the next without, without a pause or a break. And you wanna be able to improve agency reviews or audits. You wanna be able to see every document in your system, who has looked at the document, who's done what, where, when to the document. Um, all of that is provides transparency to your documentation. And in addition, if you do have an audit and you need to show proof of your different tests, your compliance, all those documents are in your system and you can get to them very quickly. When choosing a document management system, you will need to know the following things. Who's gonna be using the system? How many people will need to have uh, access to the system? What departments are gonna need to be included? What are you putting into the system? Are you creating a system just for your facilities documents? Or do you want to include HR records, finance records, other kinds of documents as well? What functionality do you need with this system? Do you want to be able to have workflow, uh, digital signatures or approval processes? Do you want to be able to share documents with people outside of your organization? And you want to be able to have the ability to access documents from any device or operating system anywhere, anytime. There are a lot of benefits to going to a cloud-based document management system. Um, when you go cloud, your documents are available to you usually uh, through a browser type search or an application. Um, you can search for information through like a Google type search. And the younger the person is in your organization, the more they like the Google search rather than searching through file folders. Access to that information, easy access, I should say, is really critical for most people today. You want to minimize your risk, being able to respond quickly, to be able to get to that documentation wherever you are responding to that disaster. If you are across your campus and the plan room is on the other side of the campus, well, you want to be able to pull up the documents to help you solve the problems right there in front of you, rather than having to travel back to the plan room to pull up your information. You want to be able to integrate with other software programs. And integration is a big, big, big part of what makes doc cloud-based document management systems um, attractive. Also, when you're storing your information in the cloud, you have lower IT costs. You're not having to manage all of that data yourselves. It's outsourced through the document management service provider. And so you don't you have much lower IT costs. I was talking about integration opportunities. Um, you know, in the in the construction facilities world, I hate to say it, but there's not one system that does everything really well. It, it just hasn't, it hasn't been developed yet. So often you need to have multiple different systems to do what you need to do, but it would, it's great when they can integrate with one another. 
So for construction projects, you would, you know, having a really good construction management software is important. For facilities, having a good work order system or building automation systems. And then a document management system to be able to house the documentation for your facilities. All of these systems are absolutely critical in doing what you do, although it's hard to find one that does it all perfectly well. So here's an example of a cloud-based document management system. All of the documents are stored in a Microsoft Azure cloud platform. Uh, the, the application is run just like you would if you logged into any website. So you can have a, a Mac device or a, or a Windows operating system. It works for every system. The idea is to keep it user friendly so that staff that might be less computer literate will not be totally um, lost when they log into the system. This particular system organizes the information according to building and document facility type. Once you get into your building documents, uh, you can have different kinds of documents related to your building across the top. You've got drawings, O&M manuals, warranties, closeout documents, active projects, uh, and emergency documents. For the drawings, that's most people's biggest pain point in the facilities world. And getting access, finding the right drawing is absolutely the, the biggest challenge today. So we break it down by discipline. So if I'm an electrician, I wanna be able to go right to my electrical drawings. If I'm a plumber, I can go straight to the plumbing drawings. And once you click on that, uh, the thumbnails of the drawings appear. You can usually uh, set up the system to go in chronological order, so your newest documents to oldest. And then on the right-hand side, you can narrow down your searches through keywords. So if I was an electrician, I got to the building I needed, I got to the electrical documents I needed, and all the way to up until this step, I haven't had to type anything in. It's all about being user friendly and being able to access this information quickly. And so when you're choosing your document management system, try not to choose a system that's overly complicated because you'll turn users off. Another advantage is having shortcuts to emergency documents. Getting to those documents that show you where the shutoff valves are or having uh, floor plans or evacuation routes. Just having a place to house your emergency documents is a really nice feature in a document management solution so that it saves steps. You can, you can get to the documents you need and who knows, it could save lives. Having a way to uh, keep track of compliance documents is a really critical thing. Some of you may have um, hospitals as part of your universities. Compliance uh, is really critical in the hospital and healthcare environments, but also for, for uh, universities, you need to keep track of when you need to, when you've done your fire extinguisher inspections and, and when you have to inspect the different, um, you know, uh, pieces of equipment that you might have on your campus. This is a great way to keep track of it. It tells you if a document has been uploaded, if you are past due on a test, what tests are coming up. So it's a great way to keep uh, track of all of your documents in a really user-friendly visual way. Many, many, many software products today are going to the software as a service model. Software as a service is what Microsoft 365, Adobe, all of your, your major cloud-based applications are all going that route, which means that instead of downloading it to your system, you're paying a yearly subscription to be able to have access to that software. Usually those subscriptions auto-renew on a particular date, 
So you have to keep that in mind when you decide to adopt a software as a service because those subscri subscription costs are going to be ongoing from here on out as long as you have that software. The other thing to consider is when you are putting your documents in the cloud, you need to ask the service provider about their security. Are they SOC 2 compliant? That is an audit to ensure that data is secure. Do they have the right firewalls in place? Do they do intrusion detection? Do they have intrusion detection systems that log events whenever um, an intruder might try and hack into a system? Is the data encrypted? Um, where is the data being stored? Are they being stored in tier four data centers with really strong physical security in place? Such uh, data centers are Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud. All of these places invest millions of dollars in their security so that they can keep their clients' documents secure. The other thing that you want to make sure is um, does the software have Active user directory or single sign-on. Does it does it require double authentication to log in? Um, what you know? What are what are the login uh, security features that they have in place? I always recommend to use active user directory or single sign-on whenever possible because it just allows um, employees rights to the software to be turned on and off once their, their uh, active user directory is turned on and off. If somebody gets fired, uh, they no longer can have access into the system when, they're, when their login uh, credentials are turned off. Uh, On-premise solutions are also an option. Uh, this is often the only option for really large institutions government agencies, or really highly secure environments, top secret type uh, document. Um, you know, an on-premise solution is fine. It, you can often get a really great document management solution. However, the organization will be responsible for their own data security, firewalls, servers. You are responsible for maintaining the security of your documents. So it's only as good as your IT department. Um, and it can be more expensive in the long run. Having a really large IT infrastructure can, um, can be expensive. And then the other thing I've found over the years is sometimes it's hard to get software products approved by the IT department. They're a big uh, stumbling block. If you have a software solution and you wanna put it on the server, you have to jump through a lot of IT hoops just to install it. So sometimes it's better to go cloud because you can get it approved easier, to be honest. So what's your return on investment for embarking on a project like this? Well, most businesses return, get a full return on investment in less than 18 months. The cost to purchase the document management system, to digitize the documents and upload them, implement, usually pays for itself in 18 months. It's an incredibly fast return on investment. The reason being, uh, you can get at least a 20% increase in productivity. New staff can hit the ground running because they can have access to the information at their fingertips through a quick search. You can reduce the square footage for paper storage. Uh, if you can use that room for another space, sell off a space, get rid of the offsite storage facility, you can save a lot of money. Uh, you reduce the risk, right? Information is valuable. And once it has been reproduced and backed up, that information won't be lost in the future in case of a fire or a theft or mold. Documents are accessible in an emergency event. You can get to that shutoff valve, you can get to that floor plan if an emergency situation happens. There are fewer change orders in construction projects. 
So if you provide your contractors with all of the documentation right up front and they make a mistake during the construction pro project, you can say, well, we provided you with the document in the beginning, that's your mistake, so you have to cover the costs, right? So, you know, you can save a lot of money on change orders if you can provide all the documentation up front. And then contractors charge less when you can provide them with the documents um, without having to send them into the plan room to hunt for what they need. I've spoken to many, many contractors that automatically tack on, say, $6,000 to their invoice when they do not have a PDF to start with of the space that they're working in. So how do I make this migration, right, from a paper mess to an organized digital library? Well, I'm going to be really honest with you. It's not easy. Uh, we found that about 70% of digital transformation projects actually fail. People do not do these projects well if they are not well trained and they don't know what steps to take when embarking on a project like this. I have cleaned up many, many digital messes in my career because the project was poorly done in the first place. The documents are digital, but you can't find them. It, it really um, is a mess. And so doing these projects correctly from the beginning will make you one of the 30% that actually succeed in a digital transformation. So how do you do it? Well, these are big projects, so you just do it one step at a time, right? Um, there are three major steps that you have to consider when embarking on a digitization project. You need to identify your end goals first. You need to set your priorities and you need to understand and set a realistic budget. So how do you plan a project with the end goal in mind? Well, you need to think about where are the digital documents going to live after they're scanned? So often I'm called in to digitize documents, but the client doesn't know where they're going to put them once they're digital. So plan on where are the documents gonna reside? What document management system are you going to adopt? You know, when you adopt a document management system, you wanna be able to have easy access to documents, you want advanced search capabilities, you want security, transparency, you want to understand how the documents are added into the system. Can we upload the documents in a giant batch? Or do we have to upload the documents one by one? Those can be very costly um, differences. Think about who will be using the system. How many people are using the system? What departments? What are you putting into the system? What functionality will you need? This is really important to think about when embarking on a digitization project. Think about what you want this to look like in the end and then work towards that goal. The next thing you need to think about is what documents to prioritize. Um, it is really critical to go through your documentation before you just start dumping things into the system. Think about what documents to prioritize to get in there first. A lot of my clients prioritize their drawings. They just want to get their drawings in first and then they start working on the O&M manuals and the project closeout documents and the, the other kinds of documents that they have. Um, but they want to prioritize those drawings. Well, you can even prioritize certain kinds of drawings, like your as-built sets, your permit sets, your original construction documents. Um, you can, you know, even narrow that set down a little bit, but you want to prioritize. You also want to think about your document retention plan. If, document, if a document needs to be kept indefinitely, I would put it on the to scan list, right? You don't want to have to keep that paper, piece of paper indefinitely. Pay to digitize it. But 
if a document is part of your retention plan and can be discarded in the next couple of years, well, you maybe don't want to spend the money to digitize it. Also, you might want to prioritize any new documents that are being delivered. So prioritize all the new documents coming in and begin your document management system going forward. So start a, a today forward mentality. All of this is, these are ways to start adopting this new system um, and you can prioritize the cost, right? You wanna be able to set a realistic budget for your organization. You can do the project in phases over several years. It's better to do it in small batches over consistently over time than to not even start at all. The transition is not inexpensive. I mean, if you're thinking of transitioning all of the documents in a campus, we're talking, you know, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars to do it all from A to Z, but it doesn't cost millions of dollars. And not acting, not digitizing, could actually be way more costly than the, the, the money that you spend to digitize. You can also be creative in how to pay for it. You can share the cost between departments. Capital construction, facilities, security, they all need access to these documents. So maybe you can, you can split the cost. Another idea is to slip the costs of these projects into a major construction project. If you are completely renovating a new building, uh, well, maybe you'll pay to digitize all the documents for that building in that renovation budget. So you can be creative in coming up with the cost to get this done. What you do need to consider when setting the budget is you need to start thinking about these four steps and figuring out the cost for these four steps. The first step is your document discovery or review. And I'm gonna go over this in a little bit. Don't skip this step. It's really important and will save you money in the long run. You need to be able to pay for the digitization and the indexing of the documents. You need to pay for the document management system itself, which includes setup costs, the cost to upload the documents into the system, and subscription costs going forward. And then the final cost is a system librarian. Who is going to be maintaining the system going forward? Who's gonna be adding in the new documentation? Who is going to be monitoring the system going forward so that it's sustainable over time. So how to begin? Well, I highly, highly, highly recommend hiring a professional. You can try to do it yourself, but I have found that most people don't have time to do it themselves. The task seems far too overwhelming to even begin to tackle. Most of my clients want a turnkey solution and they want to hire people that understand the subject matter of what's being digitized, they understand the document management solution it's going into, and they know the scanning and indexing requirements. So to do a project like this, it takes three major steps. The first step is document discovery, the second is digitizing, and the third is imp imp importing into the document management system. So what is document discovery? We also call this like our research and cataloging phase. This is what we do to figure out what exists. What do you have in a paper and electronic format today? Often we need to look in closets and offices and desk drawers on the server and thumb drives and CDs. We look at documents hidden in the basement, in the penthouse. I mean, there are documents swirled away all over the place and we need to figure out what exists. So that, discovery phase will help us get the big picture. During this phase, we can separate out duplications. If you have a digital copy, don't pay to have the paper copy scanned, right? Um, if you have, you might have three or four copies of the same set of plans in the plan room. Well, don't pay to scan those same plans three times, right? Uh, you also would want to identify the latest versions of your documents. If you have the latest and greatest version is what you should pay to digitize, not all the versions that came before. 
by doing this document discovery step, you can reduce the scanning cost by up to 50%, especially if you take the following things into consideration, your document retention periods. If a document needs to be kept for seven years, well, and it's five years old, maybe you're not gonna pay to have it scanned. That's gonna be something that you need to decide. What are you gonna do with your duplicates? I usually recommend getting rid of them or a superseded set. You don't want to keep outdated versions of a, a document because you could be working off of incorrect information. So really um, think about the big picture of what you have going into a project. And it saves a lot of money in the long run. When you get to that scanning and indexing phase, I would scan at a high enough resolution so that you can zoom in and make the drawings readable but don't make the file sizes too big. There's nothing more frustrating today than waiting for a file to open because the file size is so ginormous. I'm hearing more and more that people are recommending scanning documents at 600 DPI. And to me, that doesn't make sense. The file sizes become enormous, especially for drawings. Uh, I do recommend, however, doing OCR, optical character recognition on documents, so that you can do text searches in the documents themselves. Most of my clients want to scan to PDFs, although there are a few clients that need TIFFs for their document management system requirements. Indexing is a really important piece of the puzzle, and don't underestimate the costs involved with indexing. Um, you want to be able to index these documents so that you can search for them and find them easily later. Labeling a document, scan one, two, three, is a bad idea. You need to capture more information, right? You might want to be able to capture the building name, the project name, the date, the issue, the discipline, the project, the drawing title, the floor, the contractor. This is all really critical information if you need to search for a document in a particular way in the future. So think about what information you might need, but I would also caution you into going overboard um, because indexing is expensive to capture all of that information. So think about how you're gonna be looking for documents in the future and capture that information that you'll need, but don't go too much over that. Finally, your document management system. There are lots of different kinds of document management systems out there that can meet many different kinds of budgets. Sometimes it's a simple Excel spreadsheet. You can search for your document in the spreadsheet, pull it up, click on a hyperlink to get to the PDF file. An Excel spreadsheet works in a pinch, although it's not a long-term solution. You could use a Dropbox or a share file site, which is essentially just a file folder structure. Uh, there's limited uh, capabilities in a system like that, although that might be what you need to meet your budget. You might want to use a system like SharePoint, maybe a system you already have access to. Although with SharePoint, often it requires some um, programming and some work to make it so that it's user-friendly. You might find a very specific document management system that you absolutely love and want to adopt that is specific to your document set, like facilities documents. So, you know, there's, you just have to figure out what system you want your documents to go into. And then when you embark on this project, plan towards that goal. Begin the project with the final destination in mind, and I can't stress that enough. Digitize and index the documents to meet your document management system requirements so that you can easily upload these documents into your new system without having to reinvent the wheel. Again, I've mentioned this before, but when picking a document management system, figure out who will be using the system, what you're putting into the system, and what functionality you'll need. And then the last piece of the puzzle is the sustainability piece. You need to plan for the future. I've done many digitization projects where we've gotten their files organized, digitized, beautiful, we hand it over to the client, and then nobody maintains it for the future. 
So it's really critical to figure out who is going to be adding in the new documents as they come in. Is it, are you gonna require your staff to do it? Are you going to have a librarian manage your library? Are you going to do it yourself or are you gonna hire a, a consultant to come in and manage it for you? Put in place retention policies. You don't need to keep everything for forever. So once a document uh, reaches the end of its retention period, you should get a flag saying that it is due for removal. And I also recommend putting very clear language in uh, RFPs. You know, you don't want to have to get a batch of documents and then reformat them in order to get them into your system. If you put that language in your RFPs as the, the deliverable requirement, uh, your contractors will be setting up the documents so that you can simply upload them into the system once your project is complete. So in conclusion, we've gone over a lot of information today, but good document management will help you save time, space, and money, improve access to information during emergency situations, help you improve communication between colleagues and contractors, and it'll allow for easier staff turnover. Do you have any questions? Yes, we do have questions coming in from our audience. And our first question is, how do you measure ROI? So ROI is, you have to think about how much time are you wasting to find the information that you need. If you have to go to the plan room and rummage around for two hours, that is money out the door, right? If you are working from an outdated document and you're having to reinvent the wheel every time or you don't have a particular document and you have to go back in and do field measurements just to do a, a, a simple project, you know, that's money out the door. Um, if you are not responding in an emergency situation, well, you that could cause lots more damage than necessary because you couldn't get you couldn't get to the to the information to solve the problem quickly so there's a lot of ways to calculate it there's the cost of the printing itself that you can save there's the cost of of sharing that information so there's a lot of ways to calculate it and i can send out a document that goes over in more detail as well if you'd like Thank you. Next question. How do you balance the trades preference, pulling a paper drawing or O&M manual off the shelf with scanned documents? Can you repeat that? I'm not sure if I understand it. How do you balance the trades preference of pulling a paper drawing or O&M manual off the shelf with scanned documents? Um, so, once the document has been digitized, that manual on the shelf is simply a paper copy. So it's really the, the tradesman's preference. However, if that manual disappears, somebody borrows it off the shelf and it goes missing, it's gone for forever. So um, a lot of the guys that are, you know, have been in a situation for a long time, they like their touch and feel of the paper. But overall, it's not a long-term solution. All the younger staff that come in, they're going to want the digital file. So, you know, usually when we do a facilities plan room, we give you the paper back so that those guys can go back to the paper and the new guys can access their digital files. And I'm getting a lot of requests for you to send the ROI document, which sure. I, I will be providing the, everyone's email to Vivica, so she'll send that directly to you. Sounds great. And wanted to let everybody know, yes, the re, this recording will be on the Apple website later this afternoon. The PowerPoint slides will be available in a follow-up email uh, that, I, that you will get tomorrow from me and certificates will be available within the next couple of hours. 
We have one more question that just came in. Is there a particular style of compliance dashboard that you would recommend? Uh, yes, and I can uh, give you some information on that after the webinar is over. Okay, well that looks like we, we've taken care of all of our questions for right now. So Vivica, I'd like to thank you for taking time to do this webinar for us. And for all of our attendees today, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend with us. So until next week, be safe, stay healthy, have a great week. Goodbye now. Thank you.